Getting into med school has become more of a science today than an art. It used to be uh, that you have to do a writing section on the exam for it and a very subjective evaluation happens. Um, that is no longer the case. And now if you want to get into a med school uh, in North America, whether it's Canada or the States, you just got to do four or five things correctly and keep at it and then you will get there uh, it's very different from getting a job in real life and there's a lot of luck and object subjectivity to it so what do you need to do to get into a med school the first thing is you're going to need money that's where the sponsor comes in today today's video is sponsored by expressvpn vpn is what you all need when you need security, privacy, or access. So on the security end, uh, ExpressVPN completely encrypts your data as it transacts between you and the internet. So someone like your internet service provider or your government or anybody trying to snoop on the connection won't be able to see what you are trying to look up or what maybe secure banking information you're trying to use as you connect to the internet. On the privacy end, um, again, some countries uh, will have logs to your metadata in terms of you know, how many connections you make, what websites you, you might be visiting, or uh, you know, whether you are connecting to a country that maybe uh, raises flags with the, the government. And with a VPN, you're completely protected. No one can snoop, snoop in on your connection and all your data that you're viewing is encrypted. And last and my favorite use for VPN is you can access content all over the world. So now you can, you know, uh, present yourself as a Brazilian uh, or a UK person to a UK website so that you can watch that favorite show or the, your favorite sports game uh, in case it's geo-blocked. So yeah, ExpressVPN, down in the description below, I'm gonna put up a link. Um, with that link, if you sign up, I will get a small commission and also you will get three months of free access. And um, try it out, ExpressVPN. So back to the video. You Once you know you can afford med school, the things you all need are, you're gonna need a good GPA and I hate to be the one to break it to you. I'm not going to sugarcoat this. Uh, you need a minimum 3.85 GPA. And there's just so many people applying um, unless you have something exceptional. If you are an Olympic rower or you started your own, bu own business or something you know extraordinary, uh, unless you have one of those, you're going to need at least a 3.85 GPA and a good GPA, you know, is sort of a baseline thing for you to start. What if you didn't do well in school and you still want to apply? One way to save yourself is to then go into grad school. And um, some people who maybe didn't do so well in the first years of university can, you know, go into grad school and get a good grade and good recommendation there. That leads to the second point you're gonna need some great reference letters and usually three. And this cannot be, you know, a babysitter or a, like a teacher from high school. Um, you need to find people who are relevant. And this could be a doctor, could be a professor at the school you're trying to attend, someone, you know, with a good name and, uh, you know, ask them if you can volunteer for them and show that you're committed. And this will show up in your reference letter too, that this is not just some professor who taught you for a semester. This is, you, you need someone who you've actually had a long commitment with and worked and be able to you know, show what kind of person you are so that this person can reflect that in their reference letter. And this takes time, so start early. And uh, also the reference letters, well, tie into showing your um, quality. So med schools, whether it's at the sort of undergrad to med school stage or later going to residency, they'll look for something called CanMed. 
uh, if you look up CAMMAD, it's a set of qualities published by the Royal Canadian um, College, College of Physicians. And uh, at the center of it is medical expert, but also you need to be a good communicator, collaborator, etc. So uh, when you are sort of thinking about what to do, what, what, who to work with, um, you know, think about ways that so that three reference letters can round out your quality so that they complement each other. Maybe one person shows your research skills, the other shows your leadership and, and so forth. And um, once you've got these great reference letters, the third thing you all need is a good MCAT score. And today MCAT is out of a total score of 528. A score of 511, I would say is a minimum. And this is coming from I've interviewed a bunch of med students at this point and talked to many. And um, I think in general, 511 is the minimum you need. And if you got a score like 517, then you're in the top five percentile, then you're in really good shape. Not all schools look at MCAT. Um, some schools only look at the car section or the critical um, reasoning section and uh, the verbal reasoning. Some um, don't look at it at all. And um, so you have to research the school you're trying to get into and um, you know prepare accordingly. So MCAT, now it's all completely multiple choice. There's no written section. So it's really just comes down to you know how good is your test taking skills, how well are you read, and what prep have you done. So there are lots of companies out there. Um, just to name a few, Princeton Review, Kaplan, Blueprint. Um, you know you can look at these materials and prepare for um, the car section, and you can do some mock tests uh, with these resources. So you've got your you've got your GPA, you've got your MCAT, you've got your reference letters. Uh, last but not least is some luck, and also be able to showcase all of the things you've done in your application. And that's it, really. That's it. Um, just keep at it. Um, try to get all those things in line. And if you're really motivated to get in, that's all you need. And um, good luck.